Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I recently came across a rather interesting project called Meshcom. Now if you're familiar with Meshtastic, then this is extremely similar, but designed for use by ham radio operators only. Transmission packets are via LoRa within the ISM band. Now on the later firmware versions, the frequency can be changed using commands via the serial console. Now each transmitted packet fully supports the AX25 protocol for the payload data. Now this is the same as defined for APRS. In fact, if your node has location data set, either manually or via a connected GPS, your location data will be sent to the APRS network, assuming that the receiving gateway does have an internet connection. Now this means your location would be shown on websites like APRS.fi. Now with regards to supported hardware, the list is growing, but here is the latest list of supported hardware that already has firmware written for them. Now in today's video, I'll be showing the T-Beam and the T-Deck from Lily Go. Now when using a T-Beam device, you can either use an iOS or Android application called Meshcom, which will control the T-Beam device over Bluetooth. Now this allows you to configure the T-Beam and send and receive messages. The messages are then received and sent from the mobile app, whether it's Android or iOS, they both work the same. Now the links for the Meshcom app is available on the Meshcom website. Now I'll link that below. The app also shows a map of gateways that are currently on the air and working. At the moment, it's just kind of in Europe, but hopefully this system might grow with popularity in the near future. One of the features on the Meshcom firmware is the ability to turn on the gateway. This will require a Wi-Fi internet connection and the Wi-Fi credentials will need to be set on the device via the app or via a serial console command. Now you don't have to turn on the gateway, you can use this as a closed mesh system, but it does give the option to forward any data received onto the internet. Once the device has the gateway enabled, any data received by nodes will be sent to the Meshcom server. Now location data is sent to the APRS servers and messaging information can be seen on the Meshcom SMS webpage. Now I'll leave a direct link to this below so you can monitor the messages that are being sent and received. Now the app also has the ability to send direct messages to specific call signs, meaning if there are multiple nodes on the same mesh network, then only the DM recipient will receive that message. Now, as mentioned earlier, I will first show the T-Beam, which in my case, I have the 433 megahertz version. So just make sure you have the same as Meshcom is not supported on any other band due to it being used by licensed ham radio operators. Now these T-Beam devices have a small little screen, built in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a LoRa transceiver, along with a GPS receiver. It's all there on the same board, so no messing around with any extra modules. However, you do need a way to configure it and send and receive messages. So this is where you would use that mobile device running the Meshcom app. Now as these devices run off ESP32 hardware, we can connect other modules if we want to. Now the most popular will be modules such as temperature sensors. Now some of the supported hardware do not have GPS built in. So in some cases, external GPS modules will be needed if you do want to send live position data. Now as mentioned earlier, you can use the LilyGo T-Deck. This time you do not need to use a mobile app to configure it or to send and receive messages. And just make sure to get the 433 megahertz version of the T-Deck and ensure that the LoRa board is fitted because you can buy them without them. Now by default, the T-Deck doesn't have GPS. So if you want to utilize location tracking via APRS, then you will need the external GPS module too. Otherwise, you can just enter a fixed coordinate within the configuration file, which I'll show you in a moment. Now you can purchase separately a little LiPo battery and also print a 3D printed case. So the T-Deck becomes a nice little portable Meshcom node. As this acts as a node with no gateway, you will of course need to use a gateway or mesh device to be able to send and receive data via LoRa. For my testing, I used one of my T-Beam devices connected as a mesh gateway, which handled all of the RF to internet traffic. 
Now here's my phone connected to the T-Beam over Bluetooth and the messages sent and received from the T-Deck is via LoRa over RF directly to the T-Beam. As my T-Beam is also connected to the MeshCom gateway, my messages were received by anyone else logged into the MeshCom server. So a bit like a global chat room for ham radio operators. Now the cable in the bottom of the T-Deck here is just a USB cable to power it as I didn't have my LiPo battery and it hadn't turned up at this point of recording the video. Now those LiPo batteries are just 3.7 volts and you can get them easily from places like eBay or Amazon and they just use the micro JST connector. So how do we load the firmware onto the device? Well, it's super simple. In fact, you do have a couple of choices. You can either download the firmware file from the MeshCom website and then use the ESP32 uploader application or the most easiest is to use the MeshCom installer website, which works with Chrome. Now all you need to do is have your device plugged into your computer's USB port and know the port number. Using the web installer, you can then choose the firmware version, the model of your hardware you have, and then connect and download the firmware to the device like this. If you're loading the firmware onto a T-Beam device, then once finished, you'll need to connect to the T-Beam device from your mobile device and use the dedicated MeshCom app to configure things like location, external modules, Wi-Fi credentials for gateway access, and of course, your call sign information. If you're loading the firmware onto the T-Deck, then you need to create a configuration file like this, and then just place it onto a FAT32 formatted SD card, and then just pop that SD card into the T-Deck where it will remain while in use. You can also download a couple of sound files that get played either when the T-Deck is powering up or if you get a new message. As there are quite a few different pieces of supported hardware, I'm not going to be covering the firmware installation step by step for all of them, but most procedures are similar to the T-Beam configuration, where you load the firmware using the web installer, then configure the device from the MeshCom app. As a recap, we can look at this slide that shows two T-Beam devices connected as gateways. Any valid transmissions they receive will be sent to the connected internet gateway, which can be either Hamnet, a MeshCom server, or the APRS network, depending on the packet type. On the left, we have a mobile device running the MeshCom app, which connects to the gateway on the left via Bluetooth, allowing messages to be sent and received via the app. On the right, we have a T-Deck, which only communicates via LoRa RF. Now there's no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection between that and the gateway node. Well, there we go, guys. I hope this kind of makes sense. But if you have some of these cheap Lily Go LoRa devices knocking around, then give MeshCom a try. Maybe you might be able to send me a message too if I'm online. Until the next video, guys, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.